Okay, let's talk about principles and behaviours. We know PRINCE2 has seven principles, and if we're not using the seven PRINCE2 principles, then we're not running a PRINCE2 project. Agile also has a strong focus on principles as guidance as to what Agile is. And really, it's that guidance rather than specifically mandating any tool or technique or way of doing things that is fundamental to Agile. All the PRINCE2 principles are applicable when using Agile. That doesn't change. PRINCE2 Agile identifies five more behaviours to, to be monitored. So it's really just expanding on the principles and to differentiate the two, it's referring to them as behaviours. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll go through the seven PRINCE2 principles and have some guidance on how to apply them in an Agile environment and then we'll go through the five additional PRINCE2 Agile behaviours and talk about that. Okay, on this slide we can see the, the seven PRINCE2 principles and we have some guidance against each one. So we'll take you through them one at a time. So we'll start with continued business justification. Now the first thing to note is that Agile often uses the term value rather than benefit, but they're synonymous certainly for our purposes. We need to understand the rationale behind the minimum viable product. So if our project delivers the minimum viable product and the business doesn't realize any value or benefit, then we may, so that might be an indication that there is no continued business justification. So we stop the project. So the example in the manual is for delivering a minimum viable website. And if we don't get sufficient traffic to the website or sufficient engagement on the website in its most basic form, then that can indicate that the project's not viable. Learn from experience. And as it says on the slide, many agile concepts support this. So saying when we talk about Scrum, we talk about a sprint review where we review the product that the sprint has produced and a sprint retrospective where we review the process of the sprint to see if we can improve it. And again, we have to make sure that we feedback the lessons learned. Kanban, the Kanban method obviously talks about um, learning and, and feeding back and improving process. So it's fundamental to Prince2, learn from experience. And I guess the agile frameworks and so on really just put a bit more flesh on the bone. They just give you a bit more detail about maybe how you might learn from experience at a lower level. But learn from experience is fundamental to Prince2. We need to ensure we are learning from experience and, and apply that. Define roles and responsibilities. Clearly important in Prince2 in any project. No more or less important really in Agile. We just need to be clear who's fulfilling different roles. So for instance, in the senior user role, which is a project role on the project board, who's fulfilling that? In the delivery role of product owner, who's fulfilling that? And as I said, my personal starting point would be that the project manager fulfills the role of product owner, but that's up to you. You just need to make it clear when you're defining your organization structure, who's fulfilling the different roles, what the roles are, and try to have either a common terminology, so define just one term for each role, or if for some reason that's not possible, maybe you're working with multiple organisations, have equivalent roles that somebody who's called this is also this, but just make it clear. Managed by stages. Uh, it says on the slide, time boxes should be integrated carefully. What we have to remember is that the project is broken down into management stages. That reflects the amount of oversight the project board wants on the project manager. 
the project manager can then break a management stage down into multiple technical stages if appropriate. A technical stage may or may not be a time box. A technical stage in itself might be broken down into several time boxes. And of course, they don't necessarily have to align, although generally that makes management and reporting easier if, if starts and ends do align than if they overlap. But depending on your project, you may need to have some technical stages overlapping management stages. I'd be surprised if you had time boxes overlapping because time boxes by their very nature tend to be short uh, and therefore you should be able to align them with the management stages. But you just need to plan carefully, really. And again, when we talked about blending as to how much Agile moves up and how much Prince 2 moves down, how Agile you want to be in the management of the project, really, um, and how short or long you want your stages to be. We know stage boundaries have an overhead, and if it's considered a safe project, then you might not want to have too many stages, but you can still use Agile and, and break the project down at a lower level. Managed by exception, as it says, this is at the heart of empowering people with the appropriate level of governance. Agile is very much about empowering people, self-organising teams. The key to management by exception is obviously how much tolerance is given. And as we discussed earlier, typically in an agile environment, we might have little or no tolerance on time and cost, certainly when passed on to delivery team. So the project manager might be saying, okay, the next sprint or the, the next time box piece of development has to last this amount of time. Cost is typically fixed by the number of people. So it's the development team and nobody else. That's how much we're going to spend. The other things can vary. So where there's tolerance on other things and that's where the empowerment comes. Again, the question comes at the higher levels in managing a stage. Is the project board giving the project manager any tolerance on cost and time or are they fixing those? And again, there's no right or wrong answer to those. It depends on your project, your environment, you need to tailor appropriately. Focus on products. Agile necessarily focuses on products really, not activity. So in a in a time box, in a sprint, what the development team are focused on is delivery of products. And remember, we talked about having a common understanding of what done is. But effectively, at the end of the time box period, the development team either deliver product or they don't. You know, if they deliver nothing, then the fact that they've been had some activity is is kind of irrelevant. So there is a focus on products. They the development team are empowered to deliver products at, at a particular level and that's how we measure their success or otherwise. The point on the slide is is important where it says to focus on value. So simply delivering a product is no good if that product doesn't deliver some value or doesn't isn't going to form part of a isn't a sub product of a of a bigger product that's going to deliver value. So that the the value is is important. And as we talked about contractually, we might want to focus on outcomes rather than outputs to give the development team flexibility as to how they achieve those outcomes. And again, you need to look at the mix in the development team and the user, the user customer input on the development team and, and the mix of who forms the development team. So although in a scrum environment, everyone's called the developer, you can still have a mix of skills. Finally, tailor to suit the project. I've mentioned that on numerous occasions. I'll continue to mention it through the, pro through the course. There is no right and wrong or there's no single right and wrong, there's only what's effective or ineffective for your project. 
there is no agile yes and no it's a question of how much agile and obviously prince 2 agile provides the agile meter to help you in your decision making and discussions with regard to how you implement agile on your project but it's down ultimately it comes down to your skills and abilities as a project manager as to how you tailor prince 2 prince 2 agile for your project